practical wisdom for proactive living. Remember, where you find yourself tomorrow is a function of the actions and decisions you take today. Life is not complex. It is only demanding. Hello, friend. You are welcome once again to the Principles of Life Teaching. Uh, my name is Aki Awolaja, uh, and uh, I'm going to be taking you on another aspect of the principles of life this week. I believe that uh, the teachings that you have heard in the past five weeks have started changing things in your life. Uh, change comes in two ways. Sometimes it is gradual. Sometimes it is drastic. But in whatever way, you will be experiencing changes positively if you have been engaging the things that you have heard, the principles that you have been taught. Um, it's not just about knowing them. It's not just about being informed. Transformation comes basically when you engage the things that you have heard, the things that you have understood, and you start implementing them in your life. Then you start to see the changes. It's just like the seed. Uh, you don't see the fruit in one day. You have to plant the seed. You have to water it. You have to give it time. And at the end of the day, you will see that same seed giving you fruits. So it's a process of a time. Just take it easy. Uh, one step at a time, you get to where you're going. The most important thing is for you to understand what you're doing and keep on engaging them consciously. Uh, someone may ask me, you've been teaching for the past five weeks, this is the sixth one, on the principles of life. How many principles do we have? And how long will it take for you to teach them? Um, it's, it's amazing because uh, there are quite uh, many uh, principles of life that the creator of the earth has put together, the almighty God, for man to maximize life, to enjoy life. So I'm going to be teaching for as long as it takes. Um, there is no point hurrying up when you don't know where you're going. Find out what it takes before you leave the house. Find out what the transportation system you're going to use. Uh, find out uh, where you're going. Get all the information necessary. Then begin the journey. Uh, it makes the journey smooth. It makes the journey great. Um, your expectation is sure because you know where you're going. And that's the reason why I'm going to be teaching on this for as long as it takes because there's a lot to teach. Um, someone once asked me, he said, um, is there something particular that you can do? Just one thing that you can do and uh, you become a success. And I told the person, I said, there is nothing that you can do. There's no one thing that you can do that you can become a success. It's a combination of many things. Is a net many, and that is what the principles of life is all about. There are different factors, there are different aspects, there are different elements that comes together to work together to produce the goods, the services that we see, the results that we desire. Anytime you see a product is a combination of many things. Anytime you see a service being rendered is a combination of many things. The human body is a combination of many things. There are, are different parts working together at the same time. Um, it's not just the brain, it's not just the eyes, it's not just the hands, it's not just the fingers. Uh, there's a lot, the muscles, the ligament, uh, you know, the tissues. Um, th there's a lot, the marrow, the bone, the, the veins. There's a lot of things working in the human body at the same time to make us, you know, alive to make us well. The same thing goes with a car. There's a lot of parts working together. Every part is important. Every part is important. Every part is contributing something. So if you understand that, you understand that, you know, it takes uh, a lot for you to maximize life. There are a lot of things you have to know. Um, I always say that what we don't know is more than what we know. The more we know, the more we understand, the better we live. Uh, you can't develop an environment without enlightenment. Any environment that needs to be developed must be an enlightened environment. The computer system has a lot of stuff in there. The phone, the smartphone that you use has a lot of elements working together for it to function. So the same thing applies to the principles of life. 
ladies listening to these women listening to these and even men that cook in the kitchen who listen to this you understand that it's not just one thing that makes the meal that you cook it's a combination of so many things and it's if we understand how to successfully combine them together then we have the desired product we have the desired result so that is what it takes so i'm going to be teaching different major parts minor parts of the principles of life and i know that you're going to be inspired i know that things will start changing around you changing in you you would thank god for life because if you're doing it right you'll be getting the result right and you'll be so grateful um i've said it before a student that uh, understands the subject will always be passing the subject and be getting root gates the person will not understand how failure looks like the person won't recognize failure because the person doesn't experience failure the person knows what to do and how to do it so is it with life it's not everyone that is suffering it's not everyone that is downcast it's not everybody that is sorrowful if you understand the principles of life you understand how they work and you are engaging them consciously i tell you something that your result will be great you'll be living a great life you will see life as a privilege you'll be so thankful to god for giving you this life to live it was a man called kenneth e again that said something he said when you are ready to wait you will not be there for long a woman that I listened to, uh, Gloria Copeland, said something. He said, in persistent lies the power. This week, I'm going to be teaching on engaging power of persistence. Many people have not experienced results because they've not been engaging the key of persistence. Successful in life, you need to understand the key of persistence, how it works, what you need to do to get to where you need to get to. So let us define persistent. What is persistent? It is derived from the word persist, which simply means to hold on steadfastly to a purpose or undertaking despite obstacles. A lot of people give up easily. They do things one, twice, uh, third time, and they tell you it's not working. They don't understand that you know, it takes persistence for things to work. It takes persistence for you to break through. It takes persistence for you to have the result that you desire. There's going to be obstacles. I cannot promise you that there won't be challenges. I cannot promise you that there won't be obstacles. But one thing I can promise you is that if you persist, you will get the desired result that you want. It is all about persistence. It's part of the principles of life and you have to understand how to use it, how to maximize it, how to engage it. Why do we need it? Why do we need to be persistent? How do you see any successful person, if they are being sincere and truthful, that will tell you that they had the success once, they hit it once, they made it once, they just did it once and they became a success. Many times there are various trials that have been done secretly, openly, and then the opportunity comes and they hit it. But don't forget, it's not just a one thing. They've been doing it over a period of time. I love the story of uh, David in the Bible. We always refer to the Bible at Wise Living. We teach biblical principles. We believe in biblical principles. We, we stand on biblical principles because they are the principles of life. They are the things that God has created for life to run smoothly. David um, had a, an, a, an amazing experience. Israel was uh, fighting the Philistines some years back, and uh, everyone, including the king, the brothers of David, were at the war front, the generals, the army, the who is who, uh, you know, in terms of security, they were there. Um, David was not a member, um, didn't even know what was happening. He was tendering to his father's sheep, he was guiding them. So David had an experience that I believe most of the people at the battlefront had never had. He had fought the lion, fought the bear, uh, kept his father's sheep, he had to use a sling, you know, practice at different times. So uh, he, was, he was a different man. So when the opportunity came, the thing that he had been doing in secret surfaced. And he had the opportunity to fight Goliath, and uh, he won. 
one of the amazing things I love about that story is that the king told him, why don't you take my armory and uh, use it? And David said, I've never tried that before. I've not been used to it. I've not practiced with it. I'm comfortable using my sling and stone and I would get the result. And that is what happened. You see, the things that we do in secret is what determines our result in the open. So if you're not doing anything in secret, you better start now. The discipline you maintain in the secret is what will give you your place on the earth. So that is one of the stories you hardly see anyone that will hit it once. I'm going to be going through some examples that will help you to see the key of persistence used by people at different times. I, I want to tell the story of uh, Isaac. Isaac was the son of Abraham in scriptures after his father died. He started digging the wells of his father. And, uh, you know, a king and his people came uh, to hijack the well. And they kept on hijacking. Each time he dug, they kept on hijacking. But he kept on doing it until the king gave up to say, this man will not give up. He kept on doing it. And that was what gave Isaac his place. Persistence will always give you your place. There was a woman in the Bible that I love. And she was unfairly treated. And she needed someone to vindicate her. Now, she went to the judge and said, Judge, I've been unfairly treated. You know, there have been some injustice in my situation. Uh, can you avenge me? And the judge, being a person who didn't respect God, <laughs> didn't respect man, told the man, woman, he said, woman, I'm busy. I don't have your time. Leave it if they've maltreated you. So what? So this woman kept on going to the judge. She kept on going and going and going and saying the same thing. It's just like when your children, uh, if you've got little children and they want something, they keep on at it. They keep on and keep on and keep on and keep on until you say, okay, what do you want? What exactly do you want? They gain your attention. This was what this woman did. And at the end of the day, the judge attended to her, looked at her case, and avenged her of the case. She won. There's, there's this another woman in the Bible. She lost a coin, and uh, I believe the coin was important to her. So she, she kept searching seeking kept searching until she found it she didn't give up she looked everywhere she looked everywhere to see where's this missing coin this coin matters to me she kept on i'll say some people don't even go the extra mile in searching they don't find anything they don't do anything and they say i don't have anything there was an amazing story in the bible that i love the wise men came to herod the king to tell him that you know a king has been born and Herod knew that none of his wife was pregnant. He knew that, you know, no heir was born. So they told him, they said, the king has been born. So he told the wise men, he said, go and search diligently. It takes persistence to search diligently. And they found Jesus. If you search persistently, you will find what you are looking for. If you search persistently. There was another, I believe, another woman in scripture. A friend came to her during the night and there was nothing in the house food-wise to give the person. But she had a friend and she knew someone who had the bread. So she went to the door and started knocking. And the person said, um, who is that? She told the person her name. She said, okay, we're already in bed. My children are sleeping. Uh, we've done all the regular stuff. We've had our shower. We, we, we can't come out. This woman did not hear that. Do you know what? Persistent doesn't hear a no. All persistent hears is a yes. So she kept banging on the door, kept knocking, and the woman said, okay, 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 I'm coming. Don't wake up everybody, I'm coming. What exactly do you want? And she told her what she wanted, and she got it. If you are persistent, you will get answers. If you are persistent, you will get answers. She started knocking. There are some doors that will not open the first knock, they won't open the second knock, they won't open the third knock, but they will eventually open if you don't give up. Another example is Noah. Noah was building an ark for 120 years. My friend, you have to understand something. Everything takes time. There's a 
time element in everything. This man was told by God that I was going to rain and the rain was going to be very, very, very dangerous. It's going to rain for a period of a time. So he told them, build an ark and get people in, get animals in to preserve, you know, the seed that he has created, that God has created. And Noah was doing this for 120 years. Not one year, not two years, not three years, 120 years. Remember that persistent means or persist means to hold on steadfastly to a purpose or an undertaking despite the obstacles. There was another man in scriptures called blind Bartimaeus. This man was blind. This man was sitting by the roadside. And I believe he had heard about the miracles Jesus did. And Jesus was going to Jericho. Jesus was never going to take that a place again. He was going to the cross. So this man has, he, he had people, you know, shouting. He had a lot of people moving. I said, okay, what is happening? Who is that? They said, it's Jesus passing by. He said, Jesus, I've heard about Jesus. And she start, he started shouting, Jesus, 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 have mercy on me. He was shouting and people told, they told him, keep quiet. If you're persistent, don't let the voice of the crowd stop you. Let your voice overshadow the voice of the crowd. This is what blind Bartimaeus did. He kept on shouting until Jesus stopped and said, bring that man. What, what exactly do you want? And the man told him, he said, Jesus, I've heard about you. I want to receive my sight back. I want to see like everyone. And that was exactly what happened. Um, another person in scripture was a man called Nehemiah. Nehemiah saw that the walls of Jerusalem had fallen now and he was so concerned about the state of the people, the state of the environment because there was a disaster. And that he had, you know, favor in getting the materials, uh, favor with men, favor with women, you know, to build the wall. And there were obstacles along the way. But in 52 weeks, in a year, Nehemiah and his group built the wall. My friend, I don't know what the obstacles in your life is right now. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you have been through. But one thing I want to tell you is this. I cannot promise you that there won't be challenges. I cannot promise you that there won't be obstacles. But one thing I can promise you this is this. If you keep on, if you keep on, if you are persistent, you will get the result that you want. There was a man in, you know, some years back called Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison wanted to see electricity in display. He had seen something. He wanted it, you know, in real terms. Edison wasn't the first man to, to start it, but he was the man who stayed until the result came out. He tried it for 10,000 times, tried it out until it worked. How many times have you tried it? How many times have you tried it and you've just thrown the towel, you've given up? It was Martin Luther King that said, I may not know the number of steps I need to take, but faith means I need to start with the first step and start taking it till I get to where I need to get to. This is how the key of persistence, one of the principles of life, works. You need to engage it. Another man in America, Colin Sanders, who started late in his life, you know, went through a lot of hard times, but he remembered the recipe that he was taught, I think, by his grandmom. And uh, he wanted to sell this recipe to those who had restaurants, you know, to put on their chicken. And Connor Sanders had to knock over a thousand doors before he got his answers. The thing is, how ready are you to dig? The treasures sometimes are not on the surface. There are treasures that are deep within. The treasures of gold, silver, the treasure of copper, you have to dig deep to find them. So how, how long are you going to dig? But are you ready to keep at it if it's there? Are you ready to keep on digging till you find it? The question was asked, why do I need persistence? And I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of why you need persistence. Number one is it is the key to breakthrough in life and enterprise. Ask any successful person if they are sincere. They will tell you they didn't hit it once. They did it several times before it worked. They found out several ways that it didn't work, corrected it before it worked. You know, it, it's, it's not magic. It's a process. And if you, if you go through the process, you will have the product. Number two is that it is what builds in you character. The character of persistence, endurance, perseverance. You know, in, in terms 
and become strong, no matter what the obstacle is, you can stand firm and outwear. You know, you, you, you outwear the obstacles and you get the result that you want. Number three is that it strengthens your focus and energy. You are not dissipating energy everywhere. You are focused. You are putting the best in so you expect the best out of it. You are not going everywhere. You are focused where you are. So you generate power. You generate a lot of energy to accomplish what you need to accomplish. Number four, it is discipline that gives you a discipline. And part of what discipline does is persistence. It does it over and over and over and over again until it becomes part of you. It becomes second nature. It becomes what you do unconsciously. It's just like driving. If you drive, you know, uh, a car, they can wake you up anytime. And the skill just comes up, you, you begin to drive. Sometimes we drive without thinking. The hand knows where to go. The legs knows where to go. You know, the eyes know where to go. And you're driving. And this is what happens. This is what happens when you do it over and over again. Another thing is that it makes your personality stronger because you'll be a person that goes the extra mile. Some don't go through the extra mile, so they enjoy ordinary results. If you want to have results, extra results in your life, uncommon results in your life, be ready, be willing to go the extra mile. Be ready and be willing to go the extra mile. You cannot experience normal things like others who only do normal things. You will be experiencing extra things because you're going the extra mile. As we begin to close, what do I need to do to become a persistent person? Number one, you must know what you want. What exactly? Have you identified what you want? Do you know it? Do you recognize it? Do you know why you want what you want? It's a question that you must answer. Do you know where to get what you want? If you don't know, you must keep on searching till you know. These are questions that you need to answer. You must answer it for yourself. And when you answer it, then you can know what you want. You can know why you want it. You can know where to get it. And uh, when you have all this, there will be the reasons that will take you through the seasons of life for you to get what you want. Secondly, you must see possibilities. The things that you want to get, the things, the result that you are waiting for, are they possible? If they are possible, then keep on. Stay on it. Keep at it. If you are, if you are traveling somewhere, you will stay on the road till you get to your destination. If you are flying to New Zealand, you know that it's going to take you almost 24 hours to get there. You stay. If you're going to New York, it's going to take you about six hours. If you're going to some African countries, it's going to take you six hours. You don't tell the pilot, I, pilot, excuse me, can I come down? We've done three hours. It's taking too long. No, no, no. You stay on the flight. There are countries that will take you less than two hours. You stay there till you get to where you're going. So you must see possibilities. You must keep on uh, and you will get there. The next one is that you must understand that everything takes time. The process of waiting is included in everything we do. That is why the Bible says to everything there's a time and there's a season. If you are cooking, it takes time. If you're pregnant and you're going to you know, have a baby, it takes time. If you're writing, it takes time. Whatever activity that we do on the earth will always take time. If you're driving to a place, it takes time. This teaching is going to take time. So everything has a time element in it. You have to understand that. And the better you understand that, the better it keeps you focused, being a persistent person, because you know time is involved. Lastly, you must see the result long before it arrives in your hand. You must be focused on the result. Obstacles will come, but if you're focused on the result, you will have answers to those challenges. You will have answers to those obstacles. I've always said that life is not complex. If you understand the principles of life, it's only demanding. I cannot promise you that you won't have challenges. I cannot promise you that you won't have obstacles, but I can promise you this thing. If you engage the principles of life consciously and you know what you're doing, you are going to get your result despite the challenges, 
despite the obstacles you will overcome you will have the result you have the victory i believe that the things that you have had this week if you will put them to work you see it's not just about knowing something like i've said before it's about doing what you know and not just doing it casually is doing it conscientiously is doing it habitually is making it a lifestyle that changes life it changes your personality it changes your environment it changes your relationship it changes your life so if you would engage it it's not just about knowing it just not about hearing it not just about being informed is putting to use the things that you have had that is where the change really happens I believe that you're going to have a great week. I believe as you put your best into this week, the best will attend to you as well. I want to thank you once again for giving me time to be a blessing to you. If you've been inspired by this teaching, please share with others. Share with your friends, your colleagues. Uh, let, let it be a blessing to people uh, where we can all fly at the same time. I keep saying it without crashing in the air. I want to see you successful. I want you to live a great life. I want you to have the best of time on the earth because that is what God has created uh, for each and every one of us to enjoy the best, to have a, you know, a good life. But we must know what to do. We must know who to be. We must know what to engage to enjoy that kind of life. Once again, thank you for your time. Have a great week. God bless you. enjoyed listening to this life transforming insightful teaching for more information to purchase any of our resource materials log on to www.wiseliving.org.uk send us an email at info at wiseliving.org.uk or call us on 0794 7416 044 or 0797 040 9757 or write to us at wise living PO Box 936, Dagenham, Essex, RM9 9JL, United Kingdom. Wise Living, changing your world and the world by tomorrow.